think I've mentioned in one of these videos before about this New York based theatre maker that I really like called Richard Foreman. He writes plays and he directs them and uh, they're very unique and interesting and a lot of his plays are available online and the way he writes them is pretty unique, at least the way he claims to write them, I have no reason to suppose it isn't true. And the look of these things is very particular as well. Uh, the way he claims to write them uh, is that he kind of writes them in a kind of hypnagogic trance, it seems. That's not what he says. He says he lies on the couch all day with a notebook beside him and a pencil. And uh, whenever he, a thought emerges into his consciousness, he just writes it down. So it's um, so his players tend to be, be a, lot, a lot of non secateurs, a lot of um, uh, kind of self reflexive bits where he's thinking about what he's thinking about. Um, perhaps even evaluating what he's doing to a certain extent. A lot of apparent incoherence in that, a lot of repeats, where a theme will come back again and again, or almost like a line has, uh, has popped into his head several times over the period of time he's been writing. Uh, and these, according to, again, according to his, uh, his own writings, he says he doesn't really edit these things, he just takes these pieces of writing as they stand and directs them pretty much by the yard really because it doesn't they don't basically start or end these pieces there's no narrative logic to them there are no characters which are developed throughout them they're just lines of text uh, so he just takes a certain number of pages and and directs it and turns it into gives it a kind of dramaturgy gets a set around it and, and there's a player that they're fantastic to look at they really are interesting and to listen to and one of the things that really interests me about it is the psychology of these things. And I think psychology is really important because he's a very educated chap, Richard Foreman. And uh, he clearly knows a lot about psychology and psychoanalysis and he's well schooled in the language of all that stuff. So, um, so it's not naive by any means. But the psychology of his process and the psychology of the players themselves is, as I say, it's pretty distinct really. And it's certainly not like the the psychology you would find in most players. And by most players, I guess I mean naturalistic, realistic, fourth wall type players. In, uh, in a more conventional play, you have these things called characters and they go through certain processes. Uh, and those processes outline something like a story or a narrative. And that's supposed to do certain things and those characters are supposed to do certain things. The words that these characters say on stage are supposed to reflect the thoughts that these are happening inside these people's heads and they're supposed to be consistent and they're supposed to have particular ends in mind. Uh, and putting all the words together from the different people on those, that stage is supposed to advance a, a plot line of some kind, tell a story in which the various individual aims and ambitions of these characters interweave to come to some kind of a conclusion. So in terms of the psychology, the psychology of that is a series of you know, quite distinct, uh, highly located psychologies sitting in the heads of these people, relatively unchanging. I mean, they might go through small transformations through the course of it, but, but the individual psychologies of the characters are relatively unchanging. They sit inside the heads of the actors uh, and they kind of move around like chess pieces on a chessboard towards some kind of ultimate checkmate or ultimate zugzwang or whatever, something happens towards the end of that. Um, so there's kind of discrete, hermetically sealed bits of psychology, atomistic psychological elements. Richard Foreman's players aren't a bit like that at all, they're completely different in terms of the psychology. Uh, I guess because of the process that I've talked about, there's no sense at the beginning of this, or really during the running of the players themselves, where there are in, uh, independent, discrete characters with independent, discrete psychologies that live inside these characters' heads. The psychology is kind of distributed across the field of play. So quite often, um, a number of players on the stage will say a particular line in unison, or they'll echo it, or it'll be said, or the line that repeats perhaps will be said by one actor at one moment, and then later on that same line will be said again by somebody else. And there's no attempt to get to develop individual 
um, psychological lines of consistency within these players, the actors. They're, they're very likely to change and say some things which are completely um, different to the kinds of things they've said earlier on, for example. So there's um, the, the psychology of the player, and they are, as I say, very psychological. You get this, you get, you get this very strong feeling of a psychology at work. It, it isn't like a chess game. It isn't individual psychologies making their moves on the stage. It's, as I say, it's distributed across a wide field of activity. Uh, sometimes acting in chorus, sometimes acting individually, and certainly not weaving itself into a conventional narrative. Which isn't to say it's incoherent, and isn't to say it isn't structured, because they are highly coherent and highly structured, and very satisfying in all kinds of ways. But it's not the satisfaction that comes from watching chess chess players. It's more like the satisfaction that comes like from I don't know listening to music or something like that, or watching a choreography. Because a lot of that other psychology, just to return to this kind of naturalist psychology for a moment, I mean that is the dominant form, even in contemporary theatre, and it's certainly the dominant form in kind of drama on television and drama in the in film. You know, in in, in dramatic film and TV, you get individual characters and all that stuff I've talked about doing their little individual plot line things to weave together the narrative. Uh, you never get anything like Richard Foreman on television or in film, really. You don't get that kind of distributed psychology. But I think you do in other art forms. You don't get it in drama, but you do get it in other art forms. I was watching um, a show about a dance like Michael Jackson. It's like a talent show on TV right now. I was watching that, and there was all these groups, all kind of doing vaguely Michael Jackson-y type choreographies, and uh, it was fantastic actually. And it's such a weird thing to do to have a group of five or six or eight people doing sort of theme and variation dancing. Sometimes dancing in concert, sometimes doing solos within that, sometimes breaking up into pairs. Fantastic thing, really. Uh, and although we don't might not think of that as psychology, I think in a sense it is. You're kind of distributing the the embodied psychology of movement across uh, a field of individuals, across a space that contains a number of individuals, and no one individual in that collection is uh, is responsible for holding down a particularly coherent embodied piece of uh, narrative, if you like. It comes out of the uh, this distributed field of embodied cognition. Yeah, anyway, that's that's what I like about Richard Foreman's work, and that's what I like about a lot of the stuff to do with YouTube. Actually, no, it's a completely different idea. It's this cacophony of voices for me. Not cacophony. That's the wrong word. But a, a set of different voices, uh, which I know very little about, actually almost nothing about and I've no guarantee that the things that are being said are true of course so that so it, it doesn't really serve me to think that these things are necessarily reflective of individual psychologies uh, to the extent there is a psychology I, I, I kind of prefer to think of it as one that's distributed or I prefer to, try to entertain that thought rather than um, identifying characters which have got their own narrative line and uh, and, and we've come out weaving these narratives into a conclusion because that's clearly not what's happening I find it more entertaining to think that there's a, a weird Michael Jackson choreography going on here a choreography of ideas and, uh, and words and sounds and images <laughs>